Okay, that's better. Had to switch to my uh, mobile connection. But it's working, and that's all that matters. Hello and welcome, everybody. Happy Scotch and Smoke Rings. Happy Thursday evening. It's so good to have you here. It's so good to be back from Austin, Texas. I come back with a treasure trove of stories and a treasure trove of treasures. And, and troves, I guess. Um, this episode, we're going to have a great time. If you've got questions or comments about the new Fallout trailer, the Fallout TV show trailer, let me know. If you've got questions about the Fallout Philly experience in Austin, Texas, ask away. I'll do my best to answer. And today we're playing a really interesting game called Lazarette. This was recommended by a viewer um, last week. I No, it was the week before last. I've had it recommended a couple of times, and I watched the trailer, and I was immediately sold. Like, it's, it's the kind of game I really get into. Um, I love... Sailing games, games about ships, and this is a haunted ship? I mean, I'm there. It's called Lazarette. It's spelled differently um, than you spell Lazarette, which is a storage compartment beneath the aft deck of an old-timey wooden ship. So I wonder why that chose to misspell Lazarette, maybe just to make it simpler for the game. At any rate, uh, I'm really looking forward to the game. The, the, the trailer looked interesting, and I can't wait to explore it with all of you. Uh, I am uh, ready to go. It's good to see everybody on Facebook today. Luke Berman, Toby Noble, Alicia Wolf. It's good to see everyone on Twitch today. It's good to see everyone on YouTube today. Greg, Toby Noble, Hellcat, and 444, Mirdin, Philippe, Wade Speakerman, Magnus SL. And it's Greg with the first super chat of the day. Story time, says Greg. That's right. Uh, got a lot to share. Good to see you, Norson Wells, on Twitch. We're also streaming live on Kick. Looking forward to seeing how that particular platform pays off. Man of Warb says, Happy Pi Day. That's right, today is Pi Day, isn't it? I totally forgot. It's 3.14. March 14th, Pi Day. That's awesome. Thank you, Man of Warb. Cleansed in Fire says, What episode of the TV show are you going to be in? And did you bring any souvenirs? I, I did indeed bring souvenirs. Look, uh, I'm not going to be in any episode of the TV show. I am not an actor. I have not been cast as either an actor who wanders the wasteland as a troubadour telling stories or as the voice of a radio show in the wasteland that you can access on a channel on your Pip-Boy that many of the actors uh, in the show really thoroughly enjoyed. I am not either of those two characters in the show. And if I was, I wouldn't be able to tell you. So it's useless really asking me any of these questions. I don't know why you insist on it. Listen, I know that for um, months now, I've been saying that I'm not affiliated with the show in any way, and I'm, I'm really not at all. But less than a month ago, Amazon Prime reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to go to this event in Austin, Texas. And I was like, yeah, of course. So, I mean, I've not been lying. I've been telling you the truth. I haven't had any contact with them, or you know, I'm not involved in the show until last month when they reached out to me and asked me to come. So uh, it, it, it all happened really, really fast. It was a flurry of emails and booking, t you know, plane tickets at the last minute. Uh, and it was all really hush-hush. They didn't want us to talk about it. We had to sign embargoes and NDAs. Like, it was a big, big deal. But I'm happy to talk about the Austin, Texas event now. Uh, I can talk all about that. Hope you saw the video that I published Today, I did a, a longer deep dive of exploring the town Philly in the Fallout experience at Austin. It's about 14 minutes of walking around the town, talking with people, uh, in, engaging in some of the activities. It was a lot of fun. Norson Wells says they should have asked you to write the whole thing, in my opinion. I mean, I wouldn't have turned it down. That would have been a fun gig, but alas, they did not. Um, the Magic Q says, welcome back, Oxhorn. I'm glad you had a great time in Philly. Thank you very much. The Magic Q, I had a, an absolute blast in Philly. It was so much fun. 
Rachel says, when the show drops, do you plan on bringing it all or binging it all at once or spacing it out? What do you think your coverage will look like? I want to see the closest to a live and unfiltered reaction as possible. I've been thinking about this a lot and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to broadcast it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to stream it live. And the reason for that is primarily for copyright reasons. I, I'm, I'm, I don't understand how all of these other YouTubers can have live reactions of Hulu or Amazon Prime shows. I, I don't know how they can get away with it because I can't. Like, even uploading the trailer, which Prime Video gave to me. Like, they flew me to Austin, Texas, and they gave me the trailer to upload on the day the trailer was supposed to be released worldwide. I had permission from Prime Video themselves, and I still got demonetized by YouTube. That video got demonetized. I couldn't make any money off of it. Now, I wasn't going to make any money off of it because it was a sponsored video, but I still shouldn't get flagged by YouTube for that. So they're incredibly aggressive, incredibly aggressive about protecting their copyright of any film or television, which I can understand. Um, the problem is that when people who provide legitimate commentary like me... Um, get dinged for it as well. But streaming the entire episode live and then pausing whenever I want to hop in with a lore tidbit, it's unrealistic. It would be fun to be able to do this all again, or to, uh, to be able to do this all together. But the reason it's probably going to get me in trouble is because then people don't have to buy the show. They don't have to buy the show on Prime. They could just log into YouTube and watch Oxhorn's live commentary and they'll not only get my commentary, but also the show. Yes, I'm providing commentary, but I'm also fully broadcasting the show. So I'm not going to do that. But what I am going to do is I am going to respond to every episode. What I haven't figured out yet is how I'm going to go about it. Um, part of me is tempted to just binge the entire thing and then, you know, come up with a, a video talking about the overarching themes and all of that, which I definitely want to do, but this is my bread and butter. This is something I'm passionate about, and I think I'm going to be able to provide a lot of color and context to some of the finer details. So I kind of want to break it down by episode. I think what I'll probably do is watch episode one and then, you know, write a script or record some audio for episode one, then watch, watch epi episode two and then do the same for episode two all the way through the first season and then go back and make any changes necessary. And then I'm probably going to have to publish it all in once because the, sh the entire show is dropping all at once. Uh, it's on April 11th. I believe all of the episodes of season one are all dropping at once. So people are going to be cranking out content and I need to be on top of that. So it's going to be a fast, it's going to be a flurry of content and I'm a little nervous, honestly, <laughs> it's going to be a lot of working hours, but I'm also looking forward to it. Julian Z says, hi Ox, tell me everything about your experience. Loved your vid on it. Can't believe you hung out with Elon Musk and Todd Howard. Oh my God, your thoughts on the trailer. I didn't hang out with Elon Musk and, and Todd Howard. I saw them at the event. I did get to talk to Todd Howard, and I was really grateful for that because when I went to the Fallout 76 event in uh, at the Greenbrier back in 2019, Todd wasn't there, um, so I didn't get to meet him at that time, and I haven't been back to any other Fallout event since. So this was really my, my, la my latest opportunity to meet Todd, and he was there uh, Tuesday, was it Tuesday or Wednesday? I think it was Wednesday, no, it was Wednesday night. I forget. He was there Wednesday night uh, when we were having the big party for journalists and influencers and all of that. And uh, he was so busy talking with the director of the show and all the other celebrities. But there was a moment where he, they all left him and he was standing there by the flaming fallout sign. And I, I, I just happened to meet him. And so I, I snuck in to talk to him. It was kind of a weird experience, to be honest. Because he met eyes with me, and then he kind of went like this. He, he kind of met eyes with me and went like that, okay? And I, did, <laughs> I didn't know what to think. I didn't know how to interpret that. Did he recognize me? Did he not recognize me? I kind of got the impression that he didn't know who I was. Because when I talked to him, he never addressed me. He never said, hello, Oxhorn, hello, Brandon, or anything like that. And I didn't introduce myself either because I kind of wanted to know if he knew who I was or not. 
So I just kind of shook his hand and said, hey, Todd, I've been a huge fan for a long time. Can't tell you how much it means to me, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but then I did ask a, a lore question, and I'll tell you what he said. Um, he was interviewed about the Fallout TV show, and in the interview he said, there are times when I'm watching the show where I'll see that they did something, and I'll go, oh my God, why didn't we think of that? And I, I asked him, I said, what were some of those moments? And of course, he didn't want to give away any spoilers, so he didn't say anything specific. So I don't feel like I'm giving away anything plot-wise. But he did say that um, the show showed off some of the behind-the-scenes moments of the Brotherhood of Steel that they never got to touch on during the show. Like what life was like in the barracks, what it looked like to go into training, right? That sort of military lifestyle. They, they, they kind of show you soldiers that have already been made soldiers. But he said, I, I, I'm embellishing a little bit, but what I understood from him is that the show got to touch a little bit more on that, how a Brotherhood of Steel soldier is made. And then another thing that he said that he really enjoyed about what the show did that they never really touched on in the games is that they further explored vault tech lore. He didn't elaborate and I didn't ask because I didn't want any spoilers either, right? So he didn't elaborate. He, right after he said that, he got called away by uh, Josh and I, I didn't get to learn anymore. So uh, that was my experience with Todd Howard. It was really great to meet him. He was very gracious, very polite. It was just at that one moment when we first made eye contact, he acted a little weird. He was like, <laughs> it was slightly weird, but that's about it. He was very polite and very kind. Julian Z says, hi, Ox, tell me everything. Oh, and I, re I read that one already. Thank you very much, Julian Z. Magnus SL says, hey, Ox, play Fallout London? Maybe. I, I got to meet uh, somebody who's working on the promotion of Fallout London when I was there. Uh, Tunnel Snakes Fool, very uh, kind woman, very nice woman. She talked a little bit about Fallout London, and she made me more comfortable with the idea of covering Fallout London. And remember, I've been uncomfortable with the idea of covering fan-made lore content DLC-sized expansions because of what happened to uh, Fallout Frontier a couple of years ago. It ended up having a bunch of really creepy stuff in it before it kind of got obliterated from the internet. And I don't think any of that's going to be in Fallout London, but I also I kind of want to make sure that none of that is in it before I cover it. Uh, but I talked with uh, Tunnel Snakes Fool about it, and she made me a little bit more comfortable. Uh, so, yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll tackle it. Who knows? We'll see. Carpy says, "Loved your Philly video. I'm super excited. Will you be playing Horizon Forbidden West? I will. I don't know if I'll be playing it as soon as it's available on Steam, but I will be tackling it. Don't worry." Daniel Holmes says, "For your information, Ox, you disarming all the traps yesterday was just wasting time." And disarm kits for no gain. You get nothing from doing that. Love you, Ox. Game on. I get life. I get life for doing that. I didn't die. I mean, yes, I managed to get the puzzle correct the first time. So I ended up not triggering the traps. But what if I hadn't? What if I messed up? And then all the traps ignite. And I blow up. Sure, I wasted time and disarm kits. But I walked away with my life. It's caution. You gotta be... Careful when walking around in a in a single play, player role playing game with, with consequences for your actions. You got to be careful. Chininator says, "What character are you playing in the Fallout TV show?" Like I told you, I'm not playing uh, a, a traveling troubadour who tells stories around campfires and has a long list of experiences going back decades. I am not playing a character like that. Nor am I voicing anybody on a radio station that the main character can access from her pip boy. I am not those characters. I'm not there. So stop asking. I'm not involved in the Fallout TV show in any way. Not at all. I mean, yes, I was invited down there for the promotional stuff, but in terms of the creation and production of the show, I'm not involved. You can stop asking. Uh, Mr. Bear says, Hi, Ox. Alone in the Dark is going to be out this month. Yeah, I saw that when I was uh, trying to research the games that I'm gonna, I wanted to play today. Mr. Red says, Who wins in this meeting of the act of sarcasm in Corner 1? We have Nick Valentine, Corner 2, Arcade Ganon, 
finally, corner three, we have the sole survivor. Um, I'm gonna go with Nick Valentine. Uh, well, hold, hold on, I don't know. I might go with the Soul Survivor because it's Nick Valentine who gets pissed off at the Soul Survivor. I wouldn't go with Arcade Ganon because I would say that Arcade Ganon is more witty than he is sarcastic. He does have moments of sarcasm, but he's more qu he's more quick on his feet. Like he's got a a, a, a witty repost to any argument that the Legion in particular, or even the NCR at times, has to say about life in the Wasteland. Um, but when it comes to sarcasm, Nick Valentine has a few quips, but of course, the Soul Survivor has a lot. And he, he calls you out on it, too. He, it, he, he's not plussed. If you're sarcastic to Nick, he doesn't like it. He, he calls you out on it. Timberjack says, Hi, Ox. Glad you had fun in Philly. I bet you're a little hoarse now. He, he, he. Anyways, looking forward to the stream. I've been called many things, but a little hoarse? Never. Usually people say I look like uh, Jack Black or Kevin Smith. But a little hoarse? This is a first for me, but uh, thank you. Craig Euler says, Hey, Ox, did you hear? You can now get Fallout Magic the Gathering cards. I did hear. I, I haven't seen them yet. I've seen some pictures of them online, but I haven't started collecting them. Because I was really never a, a Magic the Gathering collector. Marine98 says, Hi, Ox and Chat. One month away from a year. That's amazing, Marine98. Congratulations and thank you so much. Jared Shover says, so sorry for being late to the stream, Ox, but uh, not to put a damper on things, but my mom's dog passed away not too long ago. His name was Snacky, and he was a Pomeranian. Well, rest in peace, Snacky. Uh, I'm sure the chat will agree with me when I hope that Snacky is snacking on many snacks in the doggy afterlife. God's Country Double O on Twitch says, have you heard that there's a Fallout movie coming out? No, no, I haven't. This is, this is all news to me. I, really? There's a Fallout movie? Or, or is it a TV show? Is it, I've, I've been living under a rock. I don't, I don't, I've never heard, I haven't heard a thing about it. So thank you for letting me know. I'm going to Google that after the broadcast. Thank you very much. Rachel says, live stream after you finish an episode. I think the community really wants to engage, chat, and hear unfiltered, unscripted thoughts besides scripted content. Maybe. I mean, that's that's a good idea. Um, how would I do that? I'm going to write a note to myself to think about ways to go about doing that. Because that's, uh, that's an... I could do that, and it wouldn't hurt me monetarily. And it would be fun. So, maybe. Thank you, Rachel. Julian Z says, Ox, couldn't you do a watch-along no showing the episode, just a timestamp showing where you are in the episode, and we can watch the show on another TV? Uh, that would be pretty tricky to try and get right. Uh, I'd, I'd have to have the timestamps synced with... I'd have to do that in post-production, so it's not something that I could stream. I'd have to actually edit it. Nah, it's a bit complicated. Maybe, maybe. I like Rachel's idea. Man of Warb says, at least you weren't exposed to Raptodon Musk. Is that a, a jab at Elon Musk? What's a, what's Raptodon Musk? Is it a, a new scent for men? I don't know. Scotty P says, see Star Trek ups and downs for review show ideas. All right, Star Trek. Star Trek ups and downs. Bent Lou Poe says, scroll up. Scroll up. All right. Um. Okay. Uh, he says, had a road trip today and was in charge of music. I played some of your old World of Warcraft songs. Throw that gnome overboard and Oxhorn brand melody. LOL, I'm a go with a god Dairy Queen. LOL, I'm a go BB the Q. Wow, that's uh, you're you're really reaching back in time for all that good stuff. Thank you very much. I hope you guys had a wonderful road trip, and thanks for stopping by to let me know. 
Mr. Red says, uh, learned the best start to deal with Cook Cook in Fallout New Vegas. Snipe his Brahmin Queenie, which he'll be frenzied to everyone. Usually he wins, but for me, he lost. That's true. If you kill his Brahmin Queenie, he goes crazy. That's one way to go about killing him. Okay, few things to show off. Uh, let's see. Everybody knows about the Jones Soda Nuka Cola Quantum. Astro Dude says uh, the office needs a little tidying up there. Tomorrow I'm going to clean up my office too. Now, my office is an absolute mess, and I, I, I do need to clean it up. I've just, you got to give me a break, all right? I'm finally broadcasting live. I'm back to my old self. After over a month of being out of commission, because my internet has been choppy, my computer crashed, blew up, leaked, and then my capture card died. I mean, everything has been hitting me all at once. But I'm here, and yes, I have a messy office, but I'm here. So you're just going to have to bear with me. Anyway, uh, everyone is familiar with the Nuka-Cola Quantum flavor of Jones Soda. But they're coming out with a new one. I don't believe it's available in stores yet, but it was available at the Fallout event in Austin. This is Nuka-Cola Victory. I'll read to you what it's supposed to taste like because I actually haven't tried it. I, I, I've managed to get one, and I saved it. I did not drink it. Peach mango flavored soda. So there you go. It's peach mango. Nuka-Cola, save your caps. Redeem your caps for gear. There you go. So there it is. That is the Nuka-Cola Victory Bottle. Looks very nice. I hope they come out with all the flavors. Wouldn't that be amazing? Shininator says, Ox, tonight I'm drinking boomerangs, Jaeger, and bourbon. Every time you die, keep this in mind when playing. Otherwise, you might lose a mod. Lol. <laughs> oh, that would be bad, Chininator. Yeah, I'd hate to lose a mod due to a drinking game. I don't know how often I'm going to die in this game as I haven't played it before. It looks scary. It uh, looks fun. But I don't know how often you die. So, no promises. Mark from Sales says, Why would you ever know if a pterodactyl is at the stall next to you? Because the P is silent <clears throat> in a pterodactyl. P is silent. I've never heard that one before. Thank you, Mark from Sales. That's a delight. A delight of a dad joke. Man of Warb says, yes, that was a dig at Elon. And I thought you'd remember the Raptodon Musk from Outer Worlds. Was there Raptodon Musk in Outer Worlds? It's been so long. I... There were so many consumables in the Outer Worlds, and they were all great, but I don't remember all of them. There's just way too many to get through. Rachel says, what do you think about the show including Sh Shady Sands? I'm glad the show is including Shady Sands. Um, I'm, okay, so I'm, I'm working on a video where I respond to the trailer. I was out of town last week when the trailer dropped. They gave me a copy of the trailer. I watched it. I uploaded it to my channel, but I didn't have a chance to respond to it because I was working on other content. So, yeah, but I want to respond to it, and I'm going to try and do that this weekend. I'm working on a video. I hope I get it done in time. But uh, essentially, my one of my big concerns, uh, if you remember when I came out with my video several months ago when I talked about my worries, was that they didn't mention the NCR anywhere. Nowhere in the articles or this or the images that were released did they mention the NCR. And anyone who knows anything about the lore of Fallout knows that it's the NCR, not the Brotherhood, who is the established um, society on the West Coast. So the fact that they would not mention the NCR is troubling. Um, I think the trailer kind of gave us a, a little bit of a spoiler. I think the trailer showed us why the NCR is barely mentioned. And I get the impression. Now, I don't know. I don't know 
where like I'm, I'm not speaking from knowledge i'm only speaking from what we see in the trailer based on only what we see in the trailer it looks like something has happened to the ncr maybe at the hands of the brotherhood because shady sands was a crater which is i mean i'm glad they covered shady sands i need the ncr to be included you can't tell the story of fallout on the west coast without telling the story of the NCR. So it was essential that they did this. They had to. Uh, but destroyed? <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, so there are really two scenes in the trailer where we learn anything about the NCR. The first is seeing the signs that says Shady Sands Public Library and it's in ruin standing in front of a giant crater. And then the other is seeing a big battle at the uh, Griffith Observatory in Hollywood between people who are dressed up in armor, wearing guns, and wielding an NCR flag and the Brotherhood. And it is the NCR flag. If you pause, it's a two-headed bear. It's not a single-headed bear. So it's not the banner for California. It's the banner of the new California Republic. It is the NCR, which means those soldiers who were walking around in battle fatigues and armor, those were likely NCR soldiers. Why were they at, at the Griffin Observatory? Why was Shady Sands in ruin? Why weren't they using any high technology? Because during the events of Fallout New Vegas, it was the NCR that had vertebrates. President Kendall was dropped down on top of the Hoover Dam to make his speech in a vertebrate. There are plenty of soldiers, NCR soldiers, who wander the Strip and the Hoover Dam in uh, suits of power armor. So why is it the Brotherhood that has all of this high technology and not the NCR? What happened after the events of Fallout New Vegas and before the events of the Fallout TV show that essentially flipped roles that made the NCR go from being on top with all of the high technology and an established society and the only thing close enough to a working democracy that the Wasteland has seen in 200 years to being owners of a crater once named Shady Sands uh, fighting in the ruins of the Griffin Observatory. How did the Brotherhood of Steel, during the events of Fallout New Vegas, go from being losers who lost the battle at Helios 1, who exiled their elder, Father Elijah, to the Sierra Madre because he was such an abject fla failure, leaving them to elect Elder McNamara in his stead, hiding at the Hidden Valley bunker for fear of the NCR with no vertebrates and some power armor. It was all T-51, by the way, not T-60, but anyway. How did they go from that to being the preeminent military force on the West Coast with vertebrates and airships and T-60 power armor and soldiers and bunkers? It's going to have to be explained. I'm not saying that it's impossible. It's unlikely, but it's not impossible. Something catastrophic could have happened. I just want it explained, and I hope they will. So far, every little lore bit that I've raised has been answered. I raised my concern about the NCR not being there, and in the trailer, the NCR is there. It's raised more questions, but I have hopes that they will be answered and they'll be adequate answers. Kenna Basure says, Ox, you look normal again. I'm glad you're back to your regular setup once more. Looking forward to tonight's stream and many more to come. Thank you very much, Kenna Basure. I am back. I'm back. We're finally back in working form. Steel 101 says, Hey, Ox and Chat. Sorry, I haven't been around for a while. I've been very busy at work lately. Still love your streams and lore videos, man. Thank you, Steel 101. Now, I get it. Work comes first, but I'm glad you're back for more Ox Orn. Julian Z says, or ox no timestamps and just say starting in three, two, one and pausing now and starting up at such and such a time. Really hoping, uh, just really hoping for a watch along. Sorry. I don't know. I'll, I'll think about it. I'll try and see if I can take a look at figuring out how I can produce a walk along while not getting penalized for copyright. Mark from Sales says, did you hear about that ranger trip to Boulder City? I heard it was a real blast. 
That's a Fallout New Vegas joke. Right there, Mark from Sales. A ranger trip to Boulder City. It was a blast. Thank you so much, Mark from Sales. Man of Warb says Chris Avalon did fantasize about destroying the NCR because he felt that once it established itself, you couldn't tell post-apocalyptic stories there anymore. It's an interesting point to make. And I understand it, and I can sympathize with it. But you can tell post-apocalyptic stories everywhere else. In the Midwest, in the South, in the East, outside of America. You can tell post-apocalyptic stories. 200 years after the apocalypse, something should be rebuilt. There should be some sort of civilization emerging. And the cool thing about New Vegas is we've got a variety of civilizations emerging that are all at odds with each other. But... Having a democratic one, it just makes sense that in the ruins of America, 200 years after the apocalypse, at least one democratic civilization would be arising to contest with all of the others. So um, I, I get where he's coming from because you want to tell a post-apocalyptic story, and that's fine. But uh, we also got to look at the timeline. Like if it, was, if it was 25 years after the apocalypse, sure, no civilization, no great new government right but 200 you pretty much gotta that's plenty of time for a new government to form nikki jillian says my thanks for lore vids to sue the teething toddler you're welcome nikki uh and uh, good luck with the kiddo chininator says i hope the tv show is good video movies and shows have historically been bad they have they have um, I'm going to be talking more about this when I publish my video this weekend, if I get to publish my video this weekend. But one of the things that I'm now almost convinced that the showrunners did right is I'm nearly convinced that they got the tone right. And that's the most important thing. Getting the tone right for the Fallout universe is half the battle. You can change a few little things here and there. You can get the shape of a bottle wrong, or you can get a moving mask on a helmet that wasn't there in the games, and uh, you can create a, a, a poison called Plan B, uh, distributed by vault Tech, which was making vaults and not pharmaceuticals. You can make little choices like that. And they're tiny, and they're insignificant, and they don't change the overarching plot, and they don't change the overarching world. And that's okay. I can forgive you. I mean, I can't forgive you about the Corvegas. Whatever, whatever. I, I, I'm not going to talk about the Corvegas. But if you don't get the humor of the universe right, if you don't get the stark tragedy of the universe, if you don't understand the voice of the universe, you're going to lose your audience. You're not going to connect with your audience. You're going to make a mistake. And I'm, I've got hope after everything that I've seen that they understood the audience, that they got it, and that they got it right. That's what I'm hoping for. We're not going to know until we actually see an episode because the trailer is just a trailer. Bear that in mind. So still cautiously optimistic, but from everything I've seen, it's just got that little spice of humor that's enough and it's not over the top because it couldn't be slapstick. Fallout is not a slapsticky genre. And they kind of went to slapstick in Fallout 2. They kind of got a... a Got a, they got carried away in Fallout 2. And there were a few moments of slapstickiness that was ridiculous. But for the rest of the Fallouts, it kind of returned to form where you had humor and you had sarcasm and you had irony and you even had a few zany moments. But the difference is that every character within the world was serious about his or her own identity. They took their role seriously. They're a vault dweller and they seriously worked on finding the water chip or they seriously worried about the people of their vault so they didn't allow you back into the vault, right? Or they're this giant mutated cr uh, creature once known as Richard Gray who took his, his philosophy and worldview seriously, seriously. He wasn't a punchline. He wasn't a joke. Fallout 2 had too many punchlines. You had an entire creature which was a, an FEV mutated mole rat uh, that was existed solely to be a pinky in the brain reference. And that was too much. Um, so, but and I haven't seen anything like that in the TV show trailer that we all got to enjoy. So I've got hope. I've got hope that they didn't go overboard, that they didn't get too crazy.
Uh, a blend pie nexus says, I think this is the first time watching one of your live streams. Been enjoying your channel for many years. Thank you very much, blend pie nexus. Glad you've been enjoying the channel. Uh, I've got a lot more content coming up. I've got a really cool video that's uh, that I'm going to publish this weekend and much more to say about the Fallout TV show in upcoming weeks. Steel 101 says, why are there pop tarts but no mom tarts? Because of the pas pastriarchy. I should have said, I should have pronounced it pastriarchy. Because of the pastriarchy. Ugh. I bungled that one, I realized, but it was it was just a bad joke from the beginning. This is one of those jokes that I'm I'm ashamed of myself for grinning at. Like, I, I'm kind of smiling, but I just want to hit myself for, for smiling. Thank you, Steel101. Love it. The Raging Krogan says, finally back into a true horror game. I'm excited. Thank you very much, The Raging Krogan. Mark from Sales gifted 10 Oxhorn memberships to the community. Thank you so much, Mark from Sales. And congratulations to Food for Thought, Christopher Estrada, Garg Dargus, Keith Michael, BJ Seward, Arthur Wigglesby, Sarah Bear, Assault Egg, The Dark Chlorine, and Ihor Buchov. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Faf says, thank you for always being honest with us. Love you. You're welcome, Faf. I am. I am always honest. I, I never lie. That's one of the things about my character as a person. Even as a child, I, I never lied, right? About about anything, about fighting with my brother, about, you know, going to the bathroom in the living room or, you know, hiding the remote or... I just didn't lie. I, I, I was born without the ability to lie. It's just one of those weird quirks. And I've brought that into my show with you. Like right now, I'm not lying because I have the inability to lie. So you're welcome. You're welcome. Rachel says, you figure out where to get one of those lanterns? I'm picturing you getting caught on the way out of Philly after show props fall out from under your shirt. Now, the only thing I picked up and walked around with was a toaster. Uh, I found out later that I wasn't allowed to do that, that, that I misunderstood the rules of the game. But watch my video from this morning to understand more about that. Victoria Calendar says, welcome back. I'd like to suggest that you check out Killer Frequency. Interesting story, lots of puzzles, tension, and I think you'll enjoy the 80s vibes. Have a great stream. Excited to see you rock the game. All right, thank you so much, Victoria Calendar. I'm going to write that down. Killer Frequency. Man of Warb says, every time I heard the I hear the word Corvega, I flash back to navigating the seemingly never-ending maze that was the Corvega assembly plant and hating every moment of that. Yeah, the Corvega assembly plant was a, a pretty tricky dungeon, especially at such a low level. It's right in the middle of Lexington, and you've got a raider boss in there, and the Minutemen send you there. There's so many radiant quests that send, send you there. So unless you're leveled up a bit, it's a, a pretty tricky place. But it, you also get a sense of achievement after conquering it as well. Joseph Wolf says Amazon owns Twitch. Yes. Yes. We are all enjoying Facts of the Day with Joseph Wolf. Thank you very much, Joseph. Nuka Tom says, tonight on Scotch and Smoke Rings, our bodacious bowler bearer returns. Taking the role of a rescue operative, he makes his way into the Atlantic to board a mysterious ship, devoid of crew and newly found after missing for four years. Let the deja vu set in, dear viewers, and stay tuned. You always have uh, very wonderful introductions to my, my episodes there, Nuka Tom. Thank you for that. Extremely kind super chat tip as well. And yeah, that's the game we're playing, Lazarette, and I, it sounds like so much fun, I can't wait to dive in. White Plume became a silver ox. Thank you so much, White Plume. The Raging Krogan says, Ox, the trailer really worried me. I didn't really get the tragic Fallout vibe from the trailer. I got a totally different vibe from the games. Well, you know, Raging, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I don't feel the same way. I, res I completely respect your opinion. And um, I think, okay, so I, there's a little bit more context that I think I can share with you that... I don't think it's going to get me in trouble. So when I was at the event in Austin, I got to see the first seven minutes of the first episode. And they showed off a little bit of those first seven minutes 
um, in the trailer as well, which is why I feel like I can talk about it. And um, it's the part with uh, Walter Walton Goggins, the ghoul, riding his horse while clutching the the little girl um, as nukes go off in the background. Um, and they had that they had that entire scene within the first seven minutes, and there was nothing funny about that scene. It was all political and uncomfortable and awful. And that's how they start it, which was amazing because it really, it brought up the specter. It brought, it brought up the horror, the horror element of the franchise. Uh, and it was really well done. It, I thought it was exceptionally well done. So um, I'm hoping that they balance it well because there are sarcastic and zany moments in Fallout, but that's not the whole voice. The voice does have tragedy and horror and um, act, just exploring what the human psyche is capable of when you're in such a position as living in a, you know, an irradiated wasteland for 200 years and, and seeing the depths of depravity that mankind is willing and capable of going through just to survive and get an edge up on their fellow man. Because that's part of the voice of Fallout as well. And so I'm hoping that the show tackles those equally well. Steel 101 says, you should try the Mafia 1 remake. It's great. Thank you very much. I'll make a note. Rachel says, uh, the loot instinct was just too strong. That it was. I picked up the first pre-war artifact I could find. The Raging Krogan says, no lie. Then what about the creepy doll? What creepy doll? Raging Krogan, you keep bringing up this concept of a creepy doll, and I look around, and I ask you, where is this creepy doll? I do not see a creepy doll anywhere. I don't know why you continue to ask about this, and I'm not lying. There is no, there's no doll in this office. Cleansed in fire says, why did the farmer name his horse Mayo? Because Mayo nays. Thank you for that one. Cleansed in fire, another. Yeah. Col Colonel 87th says, I suggest one day for testing games and one for playing through. Sounds like a great schedule right there. Or, or for, uh, one for playing. Th that's Yeah, I like that. I like that. Um, I tested this. It doesn't take me a whole day to test games. I tested this one, Lazarette in just like 10 minutes. Um, I just made sure that it worked on my computer, and it did, so that's why we're playing it tonight. Uh, Blend Pinexus says, Fallout 4 is still my favorite. Steam Deck plays it well, and it's the only game I have that I can cold boot in five minutes or less. I'm glad it's still playing well for you after all these years. Ranker1138 says, saw you in the background of another YouTuber's Philly video in my feed. Also, if you don't buy that med kit on eBay soon, I'm going to buy it out of principle. Listen, I've been busy. My computer went down. I've been out of town. Like, a lot has been going on. I'm, I'm, th I'm Yeah, I'm going to have to find the link again. I think I've still got it on this computer somewhere. But I've been, it's been a complicated, busy time for me. But I do want it. I, I, I'm thinking of getting it. Uh, Colonel 87th says, The trailer seems committed and serious at the same time. See, that's the impression that I got. Uh, I could have the wrong impression, but I'm really hoping that I don't. I, I'm hoping that... 
that it's uh, genuine, that they're genuinely sharing us with us the the voice of the game. Dark Lord says, hi, Ox and everyone. Hey there, Dark Lord. So good to see you. Von Reck says, so you're saying it isn't a moral choice, but it's a birth defect that stops you from lying? Interesting. Looking forward to more Fallout 4 and content on the upcoming Fallout show. No, 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 no. Now, it's, the birth defect is that I'm not... It's it's not that I'm... The, the defect is that I always choose the moral option, right? It means that I have a desire. I gravitate towards being good, toward, toward the morality. Like, it, I'm not lying because I don't... I can't lie. I can't, it's not because I'm incapable of lying. It's because I'm incapable of violating my already strong moral principles. That's that's what it is. <clears throat> All right. Retro Wave uh, gifted five Oxford memberships to the community. Thank you so much, Retro Wave, and congratulations to Ray Pasanas, Perf Bestruder, Darquan Mortis, Mike Mangold. Again, thank you so much. Few more things to show off before we dive into the game. I got this uh, Xbox controller. Uh, they gave this to me while I was down there. It's a Fallout themed Xbox controller. Uh, the thing is, I don't play the Xbox. So, I mean, it looks nice. I could, uh, uh, could just set it on my computer. And I got two. When I got home, I found another one waiting in a box on my doorstep. I don't know why they sent me two, but they look cool. So, this is taking up more space is what it is. Taking up more space in my office. What's next? Ah. Fallout coffee. Valiant vanilla. There's Maximus. Maximus of the Brotherhood of Steel. Atomic Apple. That's Lucy. Right, I realize it's fuzzy. Sorry about that. Lucy the Vault Dweller. And the Ghoul. Wasteland Crunch. There's the goal. Can't wait to try out each flavor. They, uh, I got this scarf. They were handing them out. They were handing them out, so I got one. Here's the other one. Oh, they're slightly different. I'm just now realizing that. Oh. Okay. So this one's green and this one's gray. Cool. I got one of each then. Mark from Sales says you can use those controllers on the PC. Okay. But why? When I could use a keyboard. Look, the reason I don't play on consoles is not because I've just got some beef with consoles as machines. I hate them and their hardware. No, I don't I don't play on consoles because of the controllers. Because I don't like controllers. Like just I've got two thumbs to use to convey information. Really? Okay, and maybe these if I'm doing something fancy with the triggers. Really? You're going to give me a controller where I can convey information with four digits as opposed to a keyboard where I can use all ten? I'm probably I'm probably being very um, dismissive right now, but I can't explain why I don't like controllers, but I don't like the three dimensions. I don't like the feel of it. It, it cramps my hand. I prefer a keyboard. I just prefer a keyboard. Oh, yeah. Hey, 
These are actually really cool glasses because they're responsive to sunlight. And they turn into sunglasses. All right, I want to test this out. Are they turning dark yet? Maybe it's only sunlight and not like light light. Oh, that's bright. That's bright, bright light. Are they turning dark yet? Darker, maybe. The Dark Chlorine says, started watching your shows because of Alien Isolation. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for watching all the way from back when I was doing Alien Isolation live streams. Robert Downs says, hey, Ox, at work now in a boat. Have a good show and hope to see you next week. Um, I doing Horizon Forbidden West. Much love to your crew slash members. Thank you, Robert Downs. I definitely can't wait for Horizon Forbidden West. Uh, Thomas McCormick says some games are better with and designed for a controller like Dark Souls and Elden Ring. Hint, hint. I see. Is that what you're suggesting? You're suggesting that I can't, I can't play those games because I'm on a keyboard. All right. The chat is saying that these aren't going to react because it's a UV. UV is what triggers them. Okay. So they're not changing. Naughty Applejack says, hello, Oxhorn. Hello, chat. I hope you're having a good day, and I wish you health and happiness. And by the way, I do not want your body pillow at all. Thank you. I do not intend to ever make a body pillow or put it on sale. That's not ever, ever, that was never something that was my plan. That was what you guys wanted. You guys come onto my program with your fantasies about Oxhorn-themed body pillows, and suddenly it's my idea? That was not my idea. That's your idea. That's what you want. That's what you fantasize about. I don't want it. And I'm not going to make it. You can go make your own body pillows. Do whatever you want there. Leave me out of it. That's what I have to say. Thomas McCormick says, The ox thong was your idea. Look. I was young. <laughs> I was young. I didn't know what I was doing. I went on a cafe press and I just put my picture on all of the products they had. And they just so happened to have a thong. Yes, I decided to call it the Ox Thong. I thought it was a good name, but that's not my fault. I was in my 20s. I was young. Can't hold me responsible for that. All right. Is it time or are we... We got a few minutes left. We got like seven minutes left and then we're going to dive into the game. Clell Big says that's exactly why you have so much trouble with the Souls games. I don't have trouble with Souls games. I just don't have the patience for them. That's all. Like, if I could sit in front of a computer and mind-numbingly play the exact same fight over and over again for an hour and a half until I master the boss that I'm only going to fight once and then once defeated, I'll never have to do it again, then I could. Like, I, I could if I wanted to. I c <laughs> I could if I wanted to. It's the wanting to that is the problem. I don't understand why they're going to have me master a different skill set for each and every boss, from the big bosses to the mini bosses, and then that's it. I never fight them again. I never see them again. Moving on. Got to relearn to play the game again all over, all over for the next boss. No, I'm not all about that. I want to learn to play the game over time as I'm playing the game, and then I want to be able to build upon what I've learned so that I get a more, you know, fulfilling, richer experience out of it. I don't want everything that I've learned to be thrown aside and say, okay, now for this boss, you actually have to jump back instead of rolling. Good luck. I just, I'm not about that. I'm not going to do it.
Nuka Tom says, will your roadhouse sweatband be included with body pillow purchases? Or is that part of the collector's edition? Oh, dear God. Oh. I don't understand. I needed the sweatband to keep sweat out of my eyes. I was practicing punches and kicks with the stunt performers and the stunt directors of Roadhouse, the movie. So I, I was sweating. It was exercise. I didn't want sweat in my brow. That's not an unrealistic desire. Hence the sweatband. What was wrong with that, Nuka Tom? Doesn't mean I'm going to suddenly come out with a line of sweatbands and body pillows. Mike Mangold says, hi, Ox. Hi there, Mike, Mike Mangold. Good to see you today. Lucky Shot says, did you see the new Pip-Boy? What are your thoughts? Did you get the Nuka-Cola victory? And are we getting a live stream for the Fallout Show release? I see you're a little bit late to the program. Yes, I got the Nuka-Cola victory. I showed it off earlier on camera. Yes, I saw the Pip-Boy. I talked a little bit about it in the video that I published this morning. And I pre-ordered one, so I can't wait to show that off. And no, we are not getting a live stream for the Fallout Show release. I might... I might do something, but but I won't be doing a live stream. Thomas McCormick says, if someone can beat Elden Ring using a DDR dance pad, then you can beat it on a controller even with your old man gaming skills. Listen, with a DDR dance pad, you're using the full extent of your limbs. You're able to move around with a controller my my fingers are bunching and they they get in this bunched position and they begin to swell and hurt and it's it's physically impossible i'm not going to deal with that i'd rather do it on a ddr dance pad brandon belfed says e evening ox interesting question if you could carry over one thing from fallout to starfield what would it be mechanic feature lore detail etc Um, vehicle building. I thought their starship builder was okay. It was really complicated at first and you had to spec into too many unnecessary perks in order to open it up. But once it was opened up and you can actually work on your starship, it was really fun to build a ship. Um, but then again, it's the Fallout universe and you don't have vehicles in the Fallout universe except for like blimps and vertebrates. That's about it. But really, that was the only mechanic that I think that Starfield did better than um, Fallout. I think Fallout had a better settlement build system. It allowed for a greater creativity. I thought the companions were a bit more interesting and they were just as annoying I wouldn't say that the Starfield companions were more annoying. Well, some of them were. Like the annoying fan. But he was meant to be annoying. So, yeah. I, I guess I'd say uh, the, the Starship Builder. Adam M became a bronze ox. Thank you so much, Adam M. Lucky Shot says, is there an upgrade option for the body pillow with a heating pad? Sorry, I was late. Been busy. Day at works. Thanks for answering. There, There is no body pillow. There is no body. There's no upgrade. There's no downgrade. There's no basic. There's no advanced. There is no body pillow. I am not coming out with one. Okay, I realize now that you're just asking me that to get my, my, my dander up. But stop. I don't, I don't ask about that. You can have your own body pillow fantasies outside of my program. I'm not interested. Colonel 87th says, play one game every hour for four hours. Oh, I see what you mean. It's tempting. The thing is, it takes me about an hour and a half to two hours to get into a game. And then once I'm into it, I think I need at least three hours to get what I want out of my gaming session. Uh, sometimes I need the full four hours to really wet my whistle and um, and get a taste for the game. So, I don't know. That, plus, that would be me buying a lot of games. 
If I'm playing a new game every hour for four hours each day, that's a lot. Mr. Red says, Ox, can you name um uh, can you name me a Fallout character, excluding the main character, that best represents their game? Just for example, Tandy represents Fallout 1. A Dornan represents Fallout 2. Well, you've done half the work for me. Um There are so many good characters in Fallout 3. Sharon is an amazing character. Fox is an amazing character. Loved both of them. Sarah. Sarah Lyons, I guess, for Fallout 3. Madison Lee is also great for Fallout 3. So is James. I guess I'll go with Sarah Lyons. And then for Fallout 4, Father, I think. The best... Because um, all of the different factions exist in one way or another to respond to father. So he's probably the, the biggest character there. Fallout 76, I mean, everyone's dead when you arrive, so there's really no character that could be iconic for that game. Uh, <clears throat> Blend Pie Nexus says, Chat, apparently Oxhorn's issues with controllers are beyond your understanding. Shut up about it and the body pillows. Well, I also, I feel like I have adequately explained why I don't like controllers. I mean, I think the words that I chose to use were clearly spoken and coherent. Like, any listener of English should be able to understand why I don't like controllers. I've already expressed about the pains in the wrist and the fingers. I don't, I don't like it. And I've also ex expressed that I'm never coming out with a line of body pillows. So it's not about understanding. I think they hear and understand me fine. They're just purposefully choosing not to. Okay, it's time. Let's do this. All right, work game work. You worked earlier. Turn the lights off. Adam M says, can we get a smoke ship in the shape of your fingers while playing a controller? No, you may not, unless it's your birthday, in which case, yes, I'd be happy to. Julian Z says, does this variety of games strategy that you're thinking about implementing mean you'll finally try Tell Tales The Walking Dead with no commitments? Hmm? Hmm? Uh, no, it doesn't. I mean, I might. Might? Who knows? We'll see. Finger Feet says, glad to have made it to the live stream. Thank you, Finger Feet. Good to see you on the live stream. Adam M. gifted five Oxron memberships to the community. Thank you, Adam M. And congratulations to Random Gray Main, Danny C., Keith Searcy, Lloyd J. Stubbs 93, and Heather O'Malley. Lucky Shot says, chat will have to make your own Ox body pillows will be available on Etsy soon. Oh, God. 
Yes, yes, go to Etsy if you want an ox body pillow. Please knock yourself out. Sarah says doing homework on spring break feels illegal. Cheers. It does kind of defeat the purpose of spring break for them to assign homework that you do over the break. Why would why would a school do that? Like what's the point then? Oh, that's awful. Man of Warb says, before you, I was watching the cringiest Mass Effect playthrough ever. The uh, LPer took minutes to select a single dialogue, kept on pausing, dragging the crosshairs over to her target, and used only a pistol as a soldier. What are you saying? Before me, you were watching the cringiest Mass Effect playthrough ever? After me, I am now the cringiest Mass Effect playthrough ever? Is that what you're trying to say, Man of Warp? Listen, I, I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's just. I didn't do any of that. I used a variety of weapons in my playthrough, and I did not linger over my dialogue options, Man of Warp. Is that what you're trying to say? Okay. I'm going to try not to take it personally. He says, before your stream. Oh, okay, I see. So immediately before watching my stream, you were watching the cringiest Mass Effect playthrough ever. Oh, okay, all right. I see. Thank you, Man of War. All right, this is Lazaret, published this year. Agon Games Limited, new game. Four years ago, a ship called the MTS Endurance disappeared on its voyage across the Atlantic Ocean. It has recently re-emerged. You are a member of a rescue team sent to investigate a distress signal coming from the once lost cargo vessel. All attempts to communicate with the ship have failed. voices? I don't hear voices. Okay, that was Carl and Simon, but I didn't actually hear any voices on the radio. Can anyone see inside? There's nowhere to put the helicopter down. We need to make contact with the crew. Don, can you can up to the deck to find out what has happened. Find a way below deck. God, that helicopter is so loud. I had to turn the volume down. If you can no longer hear the sound effects, let me know and I'll turn it back up. Nuka Tom says, anyone else getting Oprah Din vibes? Yeah, I'm getting Oprah Din vibes. That's why I'm playing it. I loved the Oprah Din. Okay, let's see what's over here. The bow of the ship. Oh, it's so dark. Well, there's the helicopter. They haven't left me yet. That's good. I can't see. I wish I had a flashlight. I don't have a flashlight. Okay, we could go up or down. Let's go down for now. Looks like that door is locked. going up. There's a cable attached 
Uh, the crane should be able to move this. Oh. Oh. Okay, move the shipping container. Blocking your path. All right, so I got to use the crane to move the shipping container. Ladder key. Okay, tab opens up the inventory, and that's the ladder key. Oh, okay, so the container is completely blocking this side of the ship. Well, how do we get to the crane? I guess we gotta go up this uh, staircase over here. Okay, cutscene. It's not a mini game. We didn't have to actually control it. Honestly, I'm kind of relieved <laughs> that we didn't have to do a mini game, that it just moves it for me. Beetle says, hell yeah, Whiskey and Oxhorn is a good night. It's a good night indeed. You guys make it better. Okay. Well, we could go up. Or we could go through. Let's go through for now. I just want a flashlight. Oh, okay, there's the door. Right, if that's the door that leads inside, I wanna make sure I'm not missing anything up here. Oh, that's it. All right. Into the unknown. Oh. Uh oh. Weather notice, access to the main deck will be restricted based on weather conditions. The color of the light indicates the current state of the restrictions. Green, clear weather, unrestricted access to the main deck. Yellow potential danger, seek permission from bridge before accessing the main deck. Radio must be carried at all times while on the main deck. Red, adverse weather, 
Full lockdown in effect until the weather improves. No access to the main deck permitted. Oh no, that means we are locked in. Crap. Oh man. Well, now that uh, we're inside and we don't hear the rain thundering down on us, I'm gonna turn the volume up just a bit. Beetle says, Ox, what is this game about? I don't really know yet. Um, you came in just at the beginning. Basically, this shipping, uh, this uh, canister ship has been lost at sea for a while, but it recently came back up on the radar. We have been sent to figure out what happened. I'm not gonna like this. Okay, left or right? That's the exit. Oh wait, that's the way we came. Oh, these, sh it's gonna be a maze. Is that blood or rust? I can't interact with it. Oh! Do you see that? Is that a mannequin? Why is it always mannequins? Simon? Not yet, but it looks like we were right about the lockdown. Make your way up to the superstructure. You should be able to release the lockdown from the bridge. And maybe someone up there can tell us what's going on. Okay, to the bridge. Right, well, this is the way we need to go then. If that triggered a cutscene, uh, I want to make sure I didn't lose anything or miss anything back here. So let's go this way. I can't sprint. I've already tried multiple times to sprint. Oh, there we go. I guess it takes a while to kick in. All right, well, we didn't miss much. There we go, now we can sprint. Hey. Huh, why are there moths on a ship? Well, we found our first code. Now to crack it. Oh. Search efforts are underway to locate a research ship that has gone missing in, the, missing in the Atlantic. The ship, which was designed to dredge up important archaeological relics from the seabed... Okay, you don't dredge important archaeological relics from the seabed. <laughs> That's the best way to destroy them. If you actually cared about archaeological relics, you wouldn't dredge them. Anyway, has gone missing along with its entire crew, including renowned archaeologist Alfred Hayes. Dr. Hayes, the lead researcher for the expedition, had reported finding a most unusual artifact before the ship's disappearance. No further details of the artifact were transmitted, leaving researchers to speculate on what this new discovery could have been. 
This article seems to be the most recent in a stack of newspaper clippings of similar disappearances going back decades. Notes you've read are added to the archive, which can be accessed through the pause menu. Important notes are marked with a pin. Oh. Notes. Okay. Well, it's not marked with a pin. Elevator. I can't jump. Oh, come on. I can't, I can't get over this? Really? I can't jump. Whoa. What was that? What was that sound? Okay, we gotta go down. Raging Krogan says, Ox, you gotta sing the entire Frozen song. Nope, nope, nope. I'm not going to. That was just a treat. Grant Haber says, Hey, Ox, I have a good game request to make for Scotch and Smoke Ring streams. It's called The Inquisitor. Play on, good sir. All right, I'm gonna make a note to myself. If I can get my notepad up. The Inquisitor. Alt Brandle says, hello, Oxhorn and Chad. I see we're on a ship again. Yes, that we are. I do love my, myself a good ship-based mystery. Stargazer says, I got the Ox plushie I ordered. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much, Stargazer. That wasn't there a minute ago. Oh, of course that wasn't there a minute ago. I realize that games like this are supposed to be really dark, but it doesn't translate very well for a broadcast. We can't see anything. Here we go. Aren't you glad we did that? Hooray. Okay.
workshop. Please don't be right behind me. Please don't be right behind me. Please don't be right behind me. First murder scene. Dead guy in a little boat. It can't be broken by hand. Can I close this now? I just don't want that thing to like jump up and get me. I, I want, I don't. Oh, this guy's crouched. Raging Krogan says, close the door. Yes. Oh, oh, what was that? What was that noise? Yeah, I want to close the door. I can't close the door. It's the first thing I would have done in real life is close the door. Yeah. Oh, really? Come on, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You go by the locker and it's like, huh? And like, ah, that's a why, dude? Just <laughs> okay. Is anything gonna move in this game, or is it all just set set design, static set design? That's really creepy. Hide. Oh no. Oh no! It's one of those games. Oh, no. Oh, I didn't know it was one of those games, man. Well, hope you're not drinking. I'm gonna die a lot. I'm gonna die a lot. I always die a lot. When it comes to games like this, Okay, we've got a hard save there. Hello, what's this? Oh, 1947. That's the combination to the uh, safe thing. Henry and the doctor left to destroy the communications equipment two days ago. They still aren't back. At this point, we can only assume they're dead. It's not important. One nine four seven. 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 Don't try and mess me up. That was diabolical right there. One nine four seven. Yeah! Oh, did you see what they did there? <laughs> they came over the PA and just started saying random numbers to try and make me not think about it. Picked up Anchor Relic. That was diabolical. Anchor Relic. Okay. Well, uh, all right. But what do I do with that? I guess. I guess nothing. Oh. Oh. Wow. 
Wow, that's just the shadow of the... Yeah, okay. All right, well, we got... Oh! That door is now open. That door is now open. Oh, wait, no. I'm thinking of something else. Oh, okay. I'm telling you, I'm gonna get all turned around. I can't believe we can't jump over this. So annoying. Okay, we got the anchor medallion. The stairwell is locked, right? Yep, the stairwell is locked. Oh, you're standing there now, are you? Oh, and you just walked. He just walked. Great. Oh, for crying out loud. Oh man, I gotta walk right by him too. Oh, is he gonna jump up and grab me? Come on, man, I just, can I, can I just walk by? Can I, yeah, all right, I'm just gonna, just gonna edge by here. Just, just don't jump up at me, please. Just, just don't jump up at me, man. Come on, I know you're a big barnacle dude, but just sit there, please. Okay, 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 that's good. That's good. That is good. Freaking hell, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're all right, everybody. I'm fine. Oh, I didn't realize. Oh, okay, hold on. I'm gonna save. this with my hands. All right. Oh, yeah, that's what I wanted to see. Yeah, thanks for that. That was great. Just, just for the nothing. It's nothing just to freak me out. Can I look again? <laughs> Stupid! Ah, oh, I hate you! Ah, oh. oh, blend pie next to says I'm fine. I'm all right. Famous last words. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I saw the little ghoulie ghoul over there. Gosh, and this is with brightness turned all the way up.
What made those shadows? What made those... What made those shadows? Like, I get those shadows, but what made those shadows? forward here. Okay, so this is the room that we saw from the other side of that, um, that portal. Some of the crew were desperately trying to get to the main deck today, despite the captain's orders to not go outside. They were adamant that they had to get above deck, and some even had to be physically restrained. The weather lock system has been overridden to stop anyone from trying this again. Like it or not, we're all stuck here now. Okay, that mannequin up there is going to chase me. So I got to remember my way back to the room where I can hide in the locker because it's going to chase me. I know it's going to chase me. Hidden O-Ball found one of seven collected. Cool. Yo, says, I've been watching you since I was nine. I'm 15 now. I'm Gracie. Hello, Gracie. Welcome to the program. Thank you for watching me for so many years. I know you're 15, but this is a scary game. I hope it doesn't scare you. I have a, an eight-year-old and an 11-year-old. And I wouldn't let them play this game, but you're much older than that, so. I'm sure you're fine. Okay, so that means that the door is up there. Yeah, there it is. That's the door we peered through earlier. Okay. Uh, like this. Like this. Don't like it. Don't like it. I am ill at ease. What are you holding out to me? gonna move as soon, as soon as I open it. As soon, it's gonna move as soon as I grab it. Don't gotta tell me twice. I'm running. Oh, come on. This isn't the time to t t t check texts. <laughs> okay. Simon says it looks like we're leaking fuel. We need to head back now, but we'll return as soon as possible. We'll be out of communication range until then. Really, this is a lost vessel that has been missing at sea. You just now found it, and now you're leaving? Crap. Okay. I don't think I'm being chased. No. 
Alt Grendel gifted five Oxhorn memberships to the community. Congratulations to Russell Romig, Diamond Lions FC, Strange Bear, Jake the Snake, and Eric Sand. Yo! Says, ah, I love you. Oh my God. No, nothing scares me at all. All right. Well, I'm glad you're braver than I because I am freaking out right about now. Okay, note to self. Come back here when I have like a crowbar or something. I can't go this way! Can't go through the door! Oh, come on, come on, let me in, let me in! I can hide in there, there's a locker! Oh. I gotta go, I gotta go forward. Got Girl Scout cookies. You want some thin mints? You can have them all. Oh. Why do they gotta do crap like that, man? Why do they gotta do crap like that? Alright, alright, alright. We're good. I get to keep the thin mints. <clears throat> uh Blend Pinexus says, please tell me your eight-year-old isn't a toxic battle royale player. I've had too much fun making kids like that crap bricks. No, no, he's not. Um, my son is actually a very sweet, sweet boy. Very conscientious, very respectful. Well, we got a key. Oh. Is it just me or does that rain sound like somebody wrapping their fingers on a table? Sort of like trat, trat. Okay, any secrets? Any secrets? I don't see any. That's a long way down. Oh, and there's blood spatter down there. <coughs> Yo! It says, are you ever doing a meet and greet? Um, it's a good idea. I probably should someday. <clears throat> I used to... Oh, I gotta go down. I can't go up. I need to go up to the bridge. Oh, man. I used to meet with fans when I would go to BlizzCon every year, and that was that was years ago, probably before you were born. And um, I was just recently at an event in Austin, Texas. But uh, I typically I don't go to events, so uh, yeah, I'll have to plan some someday. Laura says, "Ox, your son isn't the eight-year-old. Your daughter is." Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> that's that's what I meant. My my daughter is very sweet too. She, she's very respectful of people, and she would never play battle royale games. Thank you for reminding me about which of my children is which, Laura. <laughs> I'm I'm not in my, my right mind right now because I'm a little freaked out of my skin. Okay. Can't 
get going down. <clears throat> At our last stop, we picked up an extra passenger. While it's not unheard of, it's definitely out of the ordinary. I've tried asking the captain about the new arrival, but he dodges the question every time. So far, the mystery passenger has mostly kept to himself. Mostly. But I'll keep, I'll be keeping an eye on him. All right, is that an important one? No, the passenger. Oh, this is so cool. They organized the notes by topic so that for easy recall later. That's great. Okay. I'm gonna gotta test each one out. I gotta test them all out just to make sure I fit. It's gonna be important later. Well, do we say hi? I don't have a flashlight. Hey, do either of you guys have a flashlight? It's too dark. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I gotta go get a flashlight. Oh, well, this isn't too dark? This is really dark. Restricted area? What? On a ship? This looks like it should belong in a big manor. Oh, come on. Don't tell me it's a dead end. Who was whistling at me? I can't interact with it. Could I, could I have avoided that? Or was that scripted? Running. Oh. Okay. Ah, crowbar, I see. What happens if I get close to these guys? Jump up and get me, are ya? No, fine. Explore over here. It's, it's really dark. Let's see a freaking thing. Oh! Okay. Come behind us. Oh, I feel like. Half Life 2! says, Ox, I'm officially AARP old this coming Sunday. Weep for me. Oh, no. Ura River Earth, that is an achievement. That is a reward for a life well lived. I weep not for you. I celebrate you, my friend. Yo, says, thank you so 
much for talking with me. You mean a lot. Good night. Good night, yo. Thank you for stopping by. I hope to see you again. Okay, are we gonna run? Do we have to run now? No? Okay. Crowbar. Well, I'm, I know I probably can't use it on these doors, but I just had to check. Okay, we got the crowbar. Oh, dude, are you peeking at me? Is that what you're doing, dude? Ah! Oh, no. <laughs> it's like visage all, all over again. He's, the, he's peeking at me over here. Really? <laughs> I was just peeking around the corner. Creepy, man. Simon says, why is the camera so bright? Are you talking about my face cam? Yeah, I can turn that down a little, a little bit. Is that better? Still there, still looking right at me. He just turned his head. He just turned his head as I walked by. The new guy says, how long was the ship missing? I'm curious because all the bodies appear quite fresh. Um, well, this is not the Dr. Hayes disappearance. This is the most recent one. But I think it's new. I think at the beginning of the game, we learned that it had been several days. Flashlight, yeah! Let's get the lore first. The statues started to appear on the third day. It was just one or two at first, but more would show up every day. And by the end of the week, there were dozens of them. Multiple pages have been torn out. Some of the statues have started moving. They've killed three people already. When evacuating the quarantined areas, I whistled to get the crew's attention, and one of the statues whistled back. <laughs> We've only had one more fatality in the last week, 
Kisseling has proven an effective way of avoiding danger, though they won't respond if you're too close. Still, I think it would be best for the rest of us to find a safe place to hole up for now. Multiple pages have been torn out. There's not many of us left now. The engines have stopped, but we can't get to the bridge. There's something else on this ship, and it stalks the corridors looking for survivors. The safest place for us right now is in this room. I just hope we're rescued soon. Press Q to whistle, revealing nearby threats. Stephen Chauza says, did you learn the NCR lore in the show? Um, at the event, I did not. No, I mean, I really I don't know anything more about the NCR than uh, you do, because all I learned about the NCR was what was revealed in the trailer. Yes, I'll get the flashlight in a minute. I'm going to save. I can't whistle in here. Interesting mechanic. God. I'm starting to regret this game. This game is freaking me out.
How am I gonna sleep tonight? I don't know how I'm gonna sleep tonight. <coughs> okay, we got a locked safe. Pamela says, hey Ox, I've been watching your playthrough of Red Dead Redemption 2 since I'm playing it for the first time. I'm on part 11, really enjoying it. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I had such a great time playing that game. Greg Williams says, what do you call a lamb dressed as a skeleton for Halloween? Bad to the bone. I'm here all night, he says. Also, I have uh, given up trying to save Benny, lol. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's not really a way you can save Benny. I think you can let him escape, but then he just disappears from the game. Okay. interact with them. No sudden movements, dude. So turned around now, man. K 
can't be opened by hand. opened up. Okay. Alright, well I think I know what I gotta do. There was a locked door. Where was it? Where was the locked door? I remember finding it. We've got the one locked grate. We've got a key. This was it. Okay. No, it's locked from the other side. Where was another locked door? Oh. I don't remember that. It's movie time. Alt Grendel says crowbar. I think it's gone. Yeah, it's like Resident Evil. When you use something, it it, it can no longer be used for something else. And but instead of having to discard it, it just disappears. We consumed the crowbar by using it. Keisha K says, Hi Ox, TSW and I are so happy to finally watch a stream again. We're about to graduate from college in May, which is crazy because we've been watching you since we were freshmen. Love you, Ox. Good to see you again, Keisha and TK. Glad you both are doing so well. Glad you made it to the program again. Right, play me a video. I guess I will. The slides are missing. Okay, we've got a key for a door. We have a door that's locked from the other side. We've got a grate that can't be opened by hand. And we've got a projector that needs slides. He's holding it closed. He's holding it closed. He's killed most of us, but not just killed. Some of us, he marked a pair of old coins placed over the eyes. 
After a time, the body starts to move again. I haven't seen what happens next, but I've heard it. Bones twisting, flesh tearing, and then silence. The body is gone after that. Most of it, anyway. Oh, it's Davy Jones! Oh, it's Davy Jones! Oh! What was that? What was that, man? stopped at the same time. Okay, well that's gonna give us the combination. Eleven seven. Eleven thirty five. Eleven three five. The Raging Krogan says, Do ye fear death? I do fear death. I fear it.
screwdriver, okay, for the vent. I saw it pass! Oh. I haven't saved recently either. Where is it? Where's the vent? There it is. Such anxi ah! anxiety. The crew and I have been able to find out a little more about our mysterious passenger. His name is Aaron Hayes, a doctor of archaeology like the doctor who was on that ship dredging for artifacts that went missing. Turns out he has some cargo stowed, stowed in the hold, but I haven't been able to find out what it is yet. The whole situation is suspicious. Moon Sigil! Slides. Okay. And 
this is the door that was locked from the other side, right? Beetle says, what the hell is whistling back? It's got to be that thing that we've seen a couple times now. There's a button behind the fridge in the ref There's a button behind a fridge in the Oh, it's a shelf. With the radio on it. There's a button behind a shelf with the radio on it. Which room is that? Oh, it's that one. Duh! We gotta get the sun sigil. It is.
in! Oh, let me in! Come on, man! Let me in! <laughs> what did I do wrong? Run away! Keep running! Run, 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 run! Ah, faster! 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 No! <laughs> Dude! Oh, he got me! Oh, he got me! It is Davy Jones! Okay, so we've got our own Mr. X guy. Oh, I got thrown to the bowels of the ship. I'm so glad I don't have to worry about batteries in this game. <laughs> I'm so glad that I don't have to freak out about batteries. Thank God for that. I can't jump, otherwise I'd go over there. But... Well, it looks like um, that was scripted. I, I, I don't think I could have gone any faster and I don't know if anything would have changed had I done so. Oh man, I'm gonna pass right by a face. There's gonna be a face in the boxes. There's gonna be two boxes side by side and a face wedged between them right as I shuffle by. I'm telling you right now, this is gonna be staring right at me. I don't wanna look, I'm gonna look over here. I don't wanna see it. Oh, my camera's over there. I'm going to be looking right at it. Uh, it's going to... Oh, okay. Yeah. I was freaking out over nothing. <clears throat> well, that was fine. I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> Who would put a jump scare there, really? <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh, okay. Right. <whistles> Elevator. Oh. There you go. Oh. The elevator fuse is missing. Okay, gotta find the elevator fuse, looks like. Yep, up we go. Cargo hold one. We came upon a fog bank today. There was no chance of sailing. So we've had to sail straight through. Something about it makes me uneasy. With everything else going on aboard the ship, it feels like a bad omen. Potato Man says, be honest, did you speak to Elon Musk at Philly? No, I was honest in my video. Elon was uh, surrounded by people. 
I think the fewest people I saw talking with him at any given time was three. So, yeah, he was not there to meet people and shake hands. He was there to chat with his friends. Do we go over and look up? Yeah, yeah, we do. Hold on. We never opened this door. Sarah says, did you talk to Todd Howard and tell him that it just works? I did talk to Todd Howard. Um, I, I talked about my conversation with him earlier. I didn't say that it just works. I also didn't say 17,000 times the detail either. <laughs> That's going to drop as soon as I get over it. No, nope. no. Nope. Oh, oh, whoa. Okay, is there a giant spider Was in the vats? Was that a spider? Oh, man. God! Hide, hide, gotta hide, hide, hide. There's nowhere to hide. Forget this, man. Just forget this. Just no, 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 man. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Can I hide in any of these lockers? No, no, no. Okay, calm down. If you can't hide, then that means you're not gonna die. All right, so we've got a sigil on the wall. Oh, I see. Purple, orange, green, blue. Green. Red, orange. Purple. Purple. Where's that blue? That's blue. Purple. Green. any coins hiding in here ah I've been keeping an eye on dr. Hayes throughout the voyage and he's behaving very strangely he tends to avoid the crew and refuses to talk to anyone instead he usually occupies his time tinkering with strange contraptions he's installed some unusual door locking mechanisms around the ship you can't even go from the workshop to the boiler room now the captain won't do anything about it. It's been a while since I've found a coin, which makes me think that I'm about time, it's about time I found one. Hopefully I haven't missed any. There are only seven. Alright, 
Let's open the door. Sleep. I don't want any. No, I have cookies. I don't want any more. Crap. Crap. It's all locked. Oh man. Okay. Which one is it? <laughs> Shut up! Damn it! Damn it! Cargo hold. The door won't open while the cargo hold is flooded. Well, we still haven't found the fuse. Was there a save point? Yeah. Gonna save here. Louder. Uh oh. Oh no. No. Talk. You're not infected, are you? You'll need my help if you want to get out of here, but I want something from you first. There's a shipping manifest in the security room above us. Grab it for me and I'll show you the way out. Okay. Bring the shipping manifest back to the cargo hold. Okay, infected. So it's a disease? It's like a, a virus or something? <whistles> How do I know he's not infected? All right, the security office above us. I mean, I need a fuse to get the elevator to work, so... different mannequins in this freaking thing and we walk by each and every one of them and none of them attack until finally one of them does Ugh. at least it didn't kill us wow way to get me off my guard that was lame We've been sailing through this fog for an entire day now, and it doesn't show any signs of dissipating. It's pretty disorienting. 
The fog's so thick, you can't tell if it's day or night. It sounds like the crew on the main deck are being affected by it pretty badly. The captain's ordered that time on the main deck should be limited to necessary work only. I hope we're out of this soon. None of, those, none of them are being marked as important. At least not yet. Okay, gotta get upstairs somehow. Are you gonna jump at me too? Are you gonna grab me and toss me against a ball? Are you, you jerk? I can already tell you're a jerk. No, okay, you're okay. All right. Sorry for calling you a jerk. Oh, spider legs! Okay. Oh, well, where did it go? Well, where did it... Oh. Okay, it went up. But we can't jump. So we can't go up either. We can't go up too. What's he gonna do? Right as soon as I stand up, what do you think? What is he gonna do? Is he gonna play patty cake? What? <whistles> oh, I'm locked in the room. I'm locked in. Ah. There's no place to hide in here. You let me out this door? Nope. All right, back the way we came then, I guess. This wall looks suspicious. It's a suspiciously blank wall. Okay, we've got the flywheel. I guess we go this way now. Got blood. Whoa, that's a big room. Oh. All right.
There is a part missing from the water pump. Great. We need a fuse and a water pump part. Oh, security room key. Hey. Oh, dude. Really? Just sneaking up on me? Okay, I'm going to turn around and then I want you gone, all right? All right, three, two, one. Well, that's not how this works, all right? <clears throat> You're in my way, and I really don't want to have to touch you as I go by, so could you just kindly go? Go. Go. Yeah. I'm going to turn around again. Three, two, one. All right, look. I didn't want to have to do this, but I'm going to have to kick you. No! No! <laughs> jerk! Why is he such a jerk? Okay. Things are looking bad. We've been sailing through the fog for two days now with no end in sight. Early this morning, the navigation equipment stopped working and now the engines have cut out. We're working as hard as we can to repair them, but we're dead in the water right now. We've sent out a distress signal. I don't think I'll be getting any sleep tonight. I mean, how could I, I have avoided that? It was just, just appears right behind me. Well, at least I got the security room key. Guess we gotta go back upstairs now. No place to hide in this room. Oh, and he's really close. <sighs> could you, could you just stop? It's just, it's, just, it's getting annoying now. Doing wrong. All right, all right, I gotta save. I got your key! Fine. <clears throat> I got the security room key. He said it was in the room directly above him, and that's the room I went into. You're making me go through this again? What, so they can show me another spider? I don't want to see more spiders in the vents. Right, uh... Oh my gosh. There it is. Of course it's right there. 
Oh, now you're gonna look at me? Now you're gonna look at me. That's a big tentacle. Is, is this gonna get Lovecraftian? That is a big tentacle. Oh, it better not move. Don't move. Oh. <laughs> it moved. It moved, man. First the mannequin looks at me and then the tentacle moves. Stop turning! Just face one direction. There's something weird in Cargo Hold 2. As I was inspecting the machinery, I heard a strange rhythmic humming sound coming from one of the containers. I tried to investigate, but the cargo inspector stopped me and said he'd look into it. I haven't heard the sound since. The cargo inspector doesn't say anything when questioned about it and pretends not to have any memory of the encounter. Shipping manifest. Can I read it? No. Nope. Shipping manifest. That's still locked. Oh, you're back, are you? You're back now? You disappeared after scaring me a moment ago. But now you're back. How do I trap him? I gotta trap him somewhere. I can't trap him in the cargo hold because that's... I can't interact with the doors. Oh no, man, I hate this. How do, what do I do? <sighs> He's not moving now. Okay, he stopped moving. Just decided to stop moving. Oh, what do I, what do, I do now? I don't know what to do now. I was... I got the shipping manifest for what's his name, and he's gone. He got dragged out. I need a fuse. I need to repair that.
Can I climb this now? Container ox? No, I'm not going into that container. Because he's going to trap me. He's going to follow me in that container and then I won't be able to get out. You heard him run up behind me. It was like one of the weeping ang angels kind of thing. Okay, could you move, please? Oh, man, it's the only way. They're gonna, they're gonna make me do it, aren't they? They're gonna make me go in the container. I don't want to trap myself in the container with no way out. Colonel 87th says this game is not long. You can beat it in one go. Yeah, but you know me. I don't, I don't play games quickly. Oh, tell me he's gone. Tell me he's gone. He's, he's gone. Did he go? Fuse. It feels like I've been down here forever. Taking the fuse from the freight elevator has stopped anything from getting down here, but rations are running low. I'll need to get out of here soon. The passage between cargo holds one and two is flooded. I'll need to drain it before I can reach the elevator up to the superstructure, but the pump is broken. There should be replacement parts on one of the service decks. What are my chances of making it alone? Maybe I'll wait just a bit longer. Oh, that's what I thought. Did you think you're being clever? Did you think I didn't think you would do this? I knew you would do this. You're going to shut the door in my face as soon as I get close because you're a jerk. I knew you were going to do this. That's why I didn't want to go in here. What if I just look at you and slowly go like this? Oh, no. Come on, here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh. oh. <laughs> Run! Run! Get out of here. I'm gonna save. Okay, I gotta get a service deck and we gotta restore the pump to pump the water out of cargo hold and... All right. Can do. Man. Victoria Calendar says, Ox, would it make you feel better if I told you it'll all be better from here? Doesn't need to be true, right? <laughs> Best of luck. Thank you, Victoria. That does make me feel better. We've been trying to get the engines back up and running for days now with no success. 
some of the crew are starting to become despondent. Unfortunately, many of them have also taken up Dr. Hayes' infuriating hobby of building random contraptions. Hmm. Hmm. Come on, man. Safety storage room key. Cargo hold door controls. A piece is missing. Well, hi, everybody. <laughs> just don't grab at me while I walk by, please. I'm just, I just want to get from A to B here. Please don't grab me. Please don't. Oh, man. Oh, man. I don't like it. I don't like this. All right. Just, hi. Hi, everyone. Ah, uh, oh, man, I can't interact with it. All right, you're going back again. Please don't touch me. Hands to yourselves. Don't grab my pockets. I need my wallet. Don't take my wallet. Here we go. Which one of you is going to do it? I know one of you is going to do it. Oh, zombie. That's a zombie. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, another door. Here we go. It's going to be a dead end. Yeah, dead, dead end. All right. Oh. Going this way, then. Thank you all for being so polite. Thank you for the high fives. High five. Yeah, that's a high five. Oh, look at you. High five. Yeah, look at the high five. Oh, you want a high five? High five! That's a high five. Everyone wants a high five. Oh, guess I go that way. Oh, this door needs power. Angel Fit Fire Girl, one, two, three, gifted one Oxhorn membership. Thank you, Angel Fit. I'm sorry, Angel Fire Girl. Congratulations to Donald Moore. Dead end. High five. Yeah, high five. High five. We got it. Everyone's a high five. So happy. Okay. Well, that was fun. started moving he started moving wiring tile yeah
Great, I gotta open them all, don't I? They're gonna have one coin hidden in one of these. No! Well, what was all that? Just Rice says, Glad to see you back up and running, Ox. Cheers to 43 and counting. Happy birthday, Just Rice. Cheers to 43. Okay, that's the tile. I need to take it back to that first room. I think I can find my way there. We received a radio signal from a rescue team today. We tried to respond and let them know our situation, but were unable to transmit. There was no sign of the helicopter through the fog. After a while, we heard the rescue team say they couldn't see any sign of the ship and would begin searching a different area. Strangely, they said they had a clear view all the way to the horizon. The radio's been quiet ever since. I feel sick. Our only hope now is to get the engines working. Oh. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where's Don? I have to go back the long way. If I can remember how to get back. Which one of you is gonna jump out at me? I know one of you is gonna jump out at me. Right, step aside, guy. I gotta do this wiring thing. I need to get out of my way. Don't touch me! Oh, man! That's a puzzle. Okay, how does this work? Can I swap them or do I rotate them? I rotate them. That wasn't so bad. There we go. Cool. Can I have a save? I don't want to have to do that again. All right, that was the cargo hold door controls. We're good to go. What's with all the moths and all these lights? No. 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 No, 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 Oh, just devilish, just hallucinations is what that was. <laughs> Jeff Day says, hello, Ox and chat. Keep, or hope all are doing well. I'm doing very well. Good to see you today. All right, well, now I'm all turned around, aren't I? Nope. Okay, there was one door down there. 
uh, but I needed a key or in other words, no power to it. Now that I've rerouted power to the cargo hold, was is that going to open the door that was back here? It wasn't that one. Such a cool interior to explore. I was woken up early this morning by a loud scraping sound against the side of the ship. I thought we might have hit something in the fog, but when I ran to the main deck, there was nothing. There have been other sounds heard intermittently throughout the day, banging on the hull, the sound of scraping metal, a low rumble from beneath the ship. Each sound was investigated, but we found nothing. All right. Well, I need something to move. Could you stop moving, please? Yeah. Or not. All right, fine. This part is bolted on. Tony J is back. Good to see you, my friend. It's been a while. Victoria Calendar says, glad to have caught you live. Thanks for the shrieks and laughs. Looking forward to next week's stream already. Hope you all have an awesome night. Here's hoping the tentacle don't get you. Or doesn't get you, yeah. Not looking forward to meeting that again. Blood Wolf 2A2 says, hey, Ox, I just got your plush delivered yesterday. And as soon as I turned on the stream, it turned to watch. Spooky. Yeah, I have that built into all my plushes. Whenever they hear my voice, it activates um, robotic servos in the head that um, move the eyes towards wherever the voice is coming from. So it's planned. It's intentional. 
The states of United America says, why are they so rude? I don't know, they are very rude. Just interrupting me when I'm in the middle of my work. Trying to solve puzzles and they're just grabbing at me all the time. Don't grab me, don't touch me, I don't want it. What's down here? It's a dead end. Stop, man. Just stop. The hatch is rusted shut. Are they both doing it or just that one? What? Come get me! Come at me, bro! Come at me, bro, if you can't, can ya? No. Okay. Yes. Finally gonna save. My father has been missing for over a year now, but today I received a mysterious package from someone who claims to have known him. Inside the package was a strange artifact like nothing I'd ever seen before. Apparently during one of his expeditions, my father had found three such relics. Two of them he was carrying with him when he disappeared and this one he sent to me. Holding the relic in my hand, I know that it had something to do with his disappearance. Perhaps I can use it to find him. Was that written by the archeologist guy? Okay, so we're missing a gray gear. Should be easy enough. Why is there a ladder here? Just in the middle of this wall, there's a ladder, but there's no floor below. There's no floor above. Why is that here? That's weird. Oh man, I gotta go back there now too.
Okay, well I know that goes in the thing that I found downstairs. Picked up replacement pump part. No! Don't want any! No housekeeping! Man! Oh, and it's a pitch black room. Of course, it's a pitch black room. <sighs> the States of United America says, are we gonna see Davy Jones again? I hope not. Hope he's gone for good. Oh, it's so dark. It's gonna shut as soon as I get in here, won't it? Cock! Yay! Okay. Hooray. <laughs> well, I don't know where this goes. Why can't I move the one over there? They have to be touching? What? I don't understand. Oh, I have to do it in seven tries. <laughs> okay, come on. Uh, all right. I've got to move six. I've got to move six of them in seven tries. Oh, really? What? They've got to be next to each other, so I can't, I can't move over to the one on the far right. Oh, that's so infuriating. That's the only place I can put that one. I have six tries left. Okay, that can go there. What? 
seconds, I move over. Oh, do they gotta be touching? So I can go all the way over now. Why can I go all the way over now? I can select all of them now. Why is that? I guess I don't understand the mechanics. Once I move some, I can't... Like if I were to move this one over here, back back over to there, it would suddenly isn't going to work. I was hoping... Yeah, I can only move that one there. And I can't back up. I can't cancel it after lifting it up. But if I do that... Oh, that opens them all up again. But that takes an extra turn. Put that there. Okay, I can use all of them again. No, that's not what I want to do. But I... I've got six cogs to move, but only seven turns to do it in, which means I can only move one cog out of place. All the other cogs I move have to be in their final place. The Raging Krogan says one to the far right, then one to the far left. I can't do one to the far left because that's going to take away my turns, right? So I could do that one there, and I could do that one there. But now I've only got five turns to move six pieces, right? So I can move this down there, and I can move this up here, and then I can move this one down there, and then I can move this one up here, and then move this one down here, but I run out of turns. So I've only got seven turns to do it, which means I can only move one out of place. The issue is figuring out which ones to move, but then they restrict your movement and that's what I don't understand. At some point they restrict your movement. So do I move this gray one all the way down here, this one, or that one? One of these gray ones has to go down there. If I choose the middle one, I can only go down. So let's try that. Now I could immediately, I couldn't. So now I can't move all the way to the right. And I don't understand the logic behind it. So I got to move one up. I'll put that there. Now I can't, I can't move to the right. I can move up and down and left one. So then now my only option is to move that down here. But now I can't move any more to the right. So I could move that up there. There we go. Now I can move all the way to the right. What? What is that? So I got to move this there. Oh. And somehow I did it. Okay. Well, I did it, and I don't know how I did it. That's weird. There was some sort of pattern there, and I didn't understand what the pattern was. Did I have to alternate? Maybe it was, I could only choose, well, no, that wasn't it, because I could have chosen other ones as well. Oh, well. Hey, dude. Don't wake up. All right, what's this? Go! It's mine! Okay, I've got the replacement pump part and the paint locker key. I don't remember finding a paint locker. Find a way back to cargo hold one.
That's the paint locker. Up! Oh, look at that paint! Hooray! Lots of paint. Rust remover. Okay. Well, that's handy. <laughs> okay. We know what to do with that. Ladder going up, but what's down here? Nothing. Some of the crew have begun experiencing chest pains and have been sent to sickbay. We're not quite sure what's causing it, but we have an extensive medical facility aboard, so we should be able to treat them. I'd still feel better if we could get them to a proper hospital. You gonna touch me when I get too close? Yep! <coughs> I had to see if I could open this door, but it was wasted effort. I can't open the door. Looking for coins. It's been a while since I've found a coin. I think I've got five more to go. And I still haven't found any recently at all. Okay, back to cargo hold. Don't follow me again. Come on, man. Back up. <whistles> Goodbye. Is this where I dropped my flashlight? Somewhere around here? Am I gonna find my flashlight? 
I want it back. Now that goes to engineering. What's over here? Dead end. I found a cargo ship that should be taking a similar route that my father took on his final voyage. I was able to pay off the captain to take me on board. Okay, so this is the same guy. No questions asked. We're leaving tomorrow morning. I'm too anxious to sleep, but with the artifact securely stowed, there's nothing to do but wait and see what happens. Okay, so this must be the son of the guy who went missing in that first article that we read. Uh, the incident. No, Dr. Hayes. In this article, 34 missing and research vessel disappearance, this must have been Dr. Alfred Hayes, his father. And so the notes we've been finding are from his son, who happens to be the mysterious passenger. Oh, we heard, oh no, we heard those noises. This is where we heard all of that clutter and noises. Crap. Oh man, dude, why you gotta be so close to that door? They're forcing me into an altercation with this guy. Of course he's gonna knock me to the ground and then disappear, watch. <laughs> because he's blocking the only door. Because he's standing right there. No, nothing I can do to avoid that. I just got to get manhandled by a mannequin. Oh, wait. I, there's nothing there. Oh, I can't get I guess they wanted me to drop down. Okay. Well, we need to go the other way. I just wish I could find my flashlight. Well, hey, dude. <laughs> it was just leaning against the porthole. Uh. Fun times. I've got the replacement pump part. Got to get back to cargo hold one. And I don't have a light. Just going to feel my way back. Yeah. I've got a sixth sense about this car kind of thing. And there's the elevator.
Flares? Oh no. <laughs> flare safety. Please note that the flares are here for emergencies only and should not be used indoors. Igniting flares inside the ship could cause suffocation or start a fire. Oh, for Pete's sake. That damn generator went off again this morning. Last time it happened, we were stuck down here for hours, waiting for the replacement parts to be brought up from storage. Additional spares have been left in storage room up here now in case it happens again. Great. I managed to escape down to the service deck with a few others who are not infected. We've disabled the freight elevator so we won't be followed. It's not much, but it's enough to let us catch our breath at least. We were able to scrounge together a good pile of canned food from the galley before we left, but we have no idea how long we're going to be stuck down here. Hopefully, we'll be able to wait it out. How long do the flares last? Oh. I need to find a replacement part. God. Looks like they last a good long while. <laughs> it's chain shot. Probably for good reason. Yeah. Yeah, it's changed shut for good reason. Great. Gotta find a key to the boiler room. Or a passcode to the boiler room. If this sickness is airborne, we should probably turn off the large fan in the ventilation room to stop it circulating throughout the ship. We tried to get into the control room, but the door is locked. Gresham was holding on to the key, but he went into but he went to investigate the boiler room and has yet to return. This wasn't here before, was it?
Someone move that panel. Drain water from the lower floor. I don't think we're alone down here. I can hear skittering in the walls. I tried to tell myself it was all in my head, but now Gresham has gone missing. For safety, I think we might need to hole up in one of the rooms. A box of flares is all we have to keep whatever's down here at bay. Quick bio break, be right back. All right, nothing came up and whispered into my ear while I was away, did it? Yeah. For those of you who have beat the game before, how much, how, mu how far away am I from the end? Uh, I'm coming up on my four hour mark here. If there's like 30 minutes left, I'll, I'll push through and finish it. But if I've got another couple hours, then I'm gonna save it for next week. Records. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, sometimes you forget you're on a ship, right? Stay out of the boiler room. There's something in the boiler room. Luke cornered me today, adamant that he saw something in there. At first, I thought one of the statues must have made it up here somehow, but as I approached the open door, I could hear whatever it was against the far wall just beyond the light's reach. I got out of there as quickly as I could and locked the door behind me. We should stay out of that room unless we have no other choice. But in case of emergency, the combination is 3792.
All right, passcode to get into the boiler room, 3792. I need a part to get the generator working again. And there's a box of parts in storage. But it's changed shut. Boiler room. Is that Gresham? Yep, that's Gresham. control room key. Oh, I see he, where he went. He crawled up through there. Oh, okay. That was very slow and deliberate. Gonna get more flares before I go through there. I don't know how deep I'm gonna have to go. But I don't wanna run out. Water pump controls. I don't think I'm making it out of this alive. I'm the only one left. The skittering is louder now. All I can do now is sit here and watch as the last flare burns out. 
There's all the canned food we read about. Flooded sectors. Okay, there we go. Water pump controls. Okay, Tunnel E is still flooded. But we purged fresh water and incinerator. What happens if we do it again? Well, I guess we need to go to incinerator. Okay, we need to go back into that room. There was a bathroom. Explore the lower floor. Okay, I've taken a wrong turn. One of the rooms was flooded. There it is. Oh! Oh, Spidey! Spidey, go down the hole. Oh, am I gonna have to jump after him? Oh, I really don't want to. Okay. Well, here we are. Oh! Oh, we're getting a better look at him. Oh dear God. I need more flares. Let's see what was up this ladder. Looks like a locked door. 
Toxic Sean says, Hey, Oxhorn, I received my Ox plushie. It's so cool. Nice to have a version of you around while I game. You can watch me. Ha, 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 ha. Hope all is well. <laughs> Thank you, Toxic Sean. Ah, I see. Ah, okay. We made a connection. That's the way we need to go to get back. Well, the fast way, anyway. Okay, I've got the replacement pump part. This is seized up. That's locked. That's long. Do we go down here? We do. Workshop key. There we go. <laughs> I don't like that skittering. Oh. Oh, okay. cutters. Well, that's not going to help me with this, but it will help me with this.
oil because it's seized up. All right. Alt Grandel says that Hellcat says that I have about an hour left. It's uh, pushing it. worthless. I'm just trying to get to a save point right now. Ah. Generator part. Big part. Go. Yay. <laughs> it was chasing me, wasn't it? I, I knew it was going to chase me, so I just started running. I should have turned around so you could have seen it, but I knew it was going to chase me. Fix the water pump. Replace replacement pump part. I don't remember where it was. All right, well, I think that's gonna be it. I'm already 14 minutes over, so we'll finish Lazarette in my next broadcast. Had a blast with this game. Really enjoying it. Thanks, everybody, for the recommendation and for coming to Scotch and Smoke Rings today. Going to go ahead and end it here, and we'll pick up where we leave off next week. Same Ox time, same Ox channel, 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. I'm going to head to bed now, get some rest. i got a lot of work to do tomorrow if I'm going to get a video done by the weekend that explores my thoughts concerning the new trailer for the Fallout TV show. And then, once I'm done... 
with all of my content related to my Austin trip and the Fallout TV show. I'm going to hop right back on continuing the story of the railroad. We've got one more episode. The epilogue to the railroad story. One, maybe two more episodes. And then we dive right into the next faction. Will it be the Minutemen? Will it be the Brotherhood of Steel? Who knows? I don't even know yet. I haven't decided. So stay tuned to find out. Thanks again for joining, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your evening, and I'll see you again soon with more lore videos and more live streams. Bye-bye now.